Hello students. In this lecture, we will see mesh analysis and the numerical based on mesh analysis. So, if we have to calculate the voltage across any resistance or current flowing through any of the resistance, we can use mesh analysis method. Now, what are the steps that we need to follow in mesh analysis? First of all, identify the meshes in the given circuit. Now, one should understand the difference between the mesh and loop. Now, if you select a path like this one, V1, R1, R2 and back to V1. Now, this closed path does not contain any other loop within it. So, this is a mesh. Okay. But if you select a path like this one, V1, V2, R4, R3, R2 and back to V1. This is also a closed path. But it does contain any other loop within it. So this is a loop. This cannot be a mesh. So every mesh is a loop, but every loop cannot be a mesh. Basically mesh and loop, they are nothing but a closed path. Okay. So mesh is a subset. Mesh is a subset of loop. So mesh is over here and the loop is over here. So in mesh analysis, first of all, we have to identify the meshes. So if you observe this circuit carefully, there are three meshes. So the first mesh I have already shown to you. Now the other two meshes you can easily mark over here. Let's say this is the another, me another mesh over here. So this is another mesh. That means V2, R4, R3 and R1, this closed path. And the third mesh is over here. So this is the third mesh. So there are three meshes in the given circuit. Now you have to assign the current variable in each mesh. So there are three meshes. So I, I have to assume three currents over here. So in the first mesh, I am assuming the current as I1 and you have to assign the direction for the currents over here. Now you remember that we do not assign the direction by looking at the polarity of the sources, whether it is a voltage source or current source. We give arbitrary direction. But we have to give consistent direction. Consistent direction means what? If I assume I1 to be in clockwise manner, that means I will prefer I2 to be in clockwise manner and again I3 to be in clockwise manner. So I have assumed I1 in clockwise manner over here. In the second mesh, the current is I2. So again, the current is I2 in clockwise manner. And over here, the current is I3. Okay. So I have given the three variables for the three currents in each mesh. Then you have to apply KVL in each mesh. So when you are applying KVL in each mesh, every quantity should be voltage, either in the form of the voltage source as it is or current into resistance. So I'm applying KVL in mesh one. Now before applying KVL in mesh one, you have to assign the sign for the voltages developed across the resistance. Sign for the voltages across the resistance. So when I1, in, when you are applying KVL in mesh 1, I1 is moving in clockwise manner. Whenever I1 enters into this side of a resistance R1, entering sign has to be con considered to be positive while the leaving sign for, from the resistance you have to mark as a negative. Positive over here and negative over here for R2. And we will always write down in KVL the leaving sign, remember this thing, leaving sign of the voltages. You can see here, I have marked the sign for the voltages towards the left of R1 and on the upper side of R2, that means in this mesh, okay, in this area, because I am applying KVL in mesh 1. Similarly, when I apply KVL in mesh 2, I will assign the sign towards the right of R1, on the upper side of R3 and towards the left of R4, you can say, over here. So, one can take care of the po proper polarity of the voltages over here. So KVL in mesh 1, when you are applying KVL in mesh 1, let's say I am starting at this point and as I discussed, you have to write down the leaving sign. So here I am writing the positive sign over here because I am traveling this mesh in a clockwise manner. So while traveling this mesh in a clockwise manner, when you leave this sign, here you have a positive sign. So plus V1, you go ahead, you go ahead. Now when you are going ahead, here the leaving sign is negative, so minus. Now we have to write down the voltage across R1. So it is R1 and through R1, not only I1 is flowing, but I2 is flowing, part of I2 is going over here. That means the net downward current. Now why I am saying downward current? Because you are traveling this loop in a clockwise manner. We are applying KVL in mesh 1. 
so i1 is moving downward while i2 is moving upward so the net downward current will be i1 minus i2 so here i will have i1 minus i2 this is the voltage and as i said in kvn every quantity should be voltage you go ahead you go ahead again you will have minus sign over here so minus r2 and you have to write down net leftward current why leftward current because you are applying kvn in mesh one and you are giving preference to the direction of i1 so net leftward current is i1 and i3 is moving towards right if you see here i i3 is moving in clockwise manner but through r2 it is moving towards right so the net leftward current is i1 minus i3 and you have completed this loop so this is equal to zero so you have to solve this thing so you will get v1 minus r1 i1 my plus r1 i2 then you will have minus r2 i1 and here you will have plus r2 i3 is equal to zero so this is how you get or how you apply kvn over here but what we say over here you have to obtain the equation in terms of unknown currents and unknown currents are i1 i2 i3 so I will arrange, I will write down this equation in nice format. Now what do you mean by nice format over here? So I will keep I1, I2, I3 on one side and that means unknown currents on one side and voltage term or constants on another side. So when you arrange this equation, you will have R1 plus R2 into I1. Then you will have minus R1 times I2 and you will have minus r2 times i3 is equal to v1 you can see here if you adjust the terms of in this equation you will get this equation how i can write down this equation or how i can validate this equation so if you see over here when you are applying kvn in mesh one you add all the resistances in mesh one so the two resistances are there r1 and r2 so they are nothing but the coefficient of i1 is there any resistance shared with mesh 2? Yes, the resistance is R1. This is shared between mesh 1 and mesh 2 or you can say common between mesh 1 and mesh 2. And through R1, I1 is moving downward, I2 is moving upward. So the currents are in opposite direction. That's why minus sign and I2 will come over here. Okay. Is there any resistance shared with mesh 3? Yes, there are R2. So here you will have R2. What about the current flowing through R2, I1 towards left and I3 towards right. So these two currents are in opposite direction. So that's why minus sign and I3. So this is how you can change this thing. Okay. We'll see this thing clearly when we uh, analyze the circuit. And when you apply KVL in mesh 1, there is this voltage. Okay. And when you are going up, you have a leaving sign plus V1. So that will come over here. If you are getting confused, no problem. You can just rearrange this equation, this line, and you will get this equation. So this is my equation number one. Okay. Similarly, you can apply KVL in mesh two. You can apply KVL in mesh three, and you will get three more equations. And you know that if there are three equations and three unknowns, one can easily find out I one, I two, and I three. So once you get I one, I two, and I three. You can find out the voltage across any resistance or current flowing through any of the resistance. So we'll see for better understanding one numerical over here. So here they are saying that you have to find out the current flowing through one ohm resistor. Okay, one ohm resistor is over. Now the first step is identify the number of meshes. So one can easily see here there are two meshes. This is one close closed loop and this is another closed loop. So here I am assuming the currents in clockwise manner and I am denoting the current as I1. And in mesh 2, I am assuming the current as I2 over here. So here I am assuming the current as I2. Again, I am repeating these current directions are marked not by looking at the polarity of sources, but I prefer to be in clockwise manner. Now we have to apply KVL in mesh 1. But before applying KVL in mesh 1, you have to assign the sign for the voltages developed across the resistance. So whenever current enters positive sign, whenever it leaves negative sign. Positive over here, negative over here for the 3 ohm. And for the 4 ohm, plus will be over here, minus will be over here. Okay. 
So signs have been assigned and now we will apply KVL over here. Basically you are traveling this loop in a clockwise manner. So I am starting at this point. So as you go up you will have a plus 10 volt. So 10 volt. KVL. Remember this thing that every quantity should be voltage. Either the voltage value as it is or current into resistance. Now we proceed ahead. After 10 volt you have a 5 ohm. So leaving sign is minus. So minus 5. And the current is I1. So minus 5 times I1. Of course this is the voltage. You go ahead. Then you will have minus 3 times I1. You go ahead. Minus 4 times. Now 4 ohm is shared between mesh 1 and mesh 2. So here you will have I1 minus I2. Because I1 is moving downward, I2 is going upward. So through 4 ohm, these two currents are in opposite direction. And you have to write down net downward current because you are applying KVL in mesh 1. Okay. And then you have completed the loop. So is equal to 0. So we solve this thing. So 10 minus 5 I1 minus 3 I1 minus 4 I1 plus 4 I2. A plus ho jayega. And you will have plus 4 I2 is equal to 0. So we have to arrange this equation in nice format. So 5 plus 3, 8 plus 4, 12. So I will have 12 I1. And another side this will become minus 4 I2. And this is equal to 10. Okay. So this is my equation number 1. Now you have to apply KVL in mesh 2. So that I am writing over here. KVL in mesh 2. Okay. Now before applying KVL you need to assign the sign for the voltage is developed across the resistance. So whenever current enters positive sign when it leaves negative positive over here negative over here positive over here and negative over here. Okay. So I am starting at this point over here. So as you progress you will have minus 3 times I2. Remember KVL every quantity should be voltage. So minus 3 times I2 minus 1 time I2 no problem go ahead go ahead minus 4 times yeah 4 ohm is shared between mesh 1 and mesh 2. Now you have to write on net upward current rather you give preference to I2 because you are applying KVL in mesh 2. So you go ahead so leaving sign is minus minus 4 times I2 minus I1 because I2 is up going while I1 is downward current through 4 ohm and you have completed this path so this is equal to 0. So when we have to solve this thing so minus 3 I2 minus 1 I2 minus 4 I2 and here I will have plus 4 I1 is equal to 0. Now I will write down this equation in nice format. What do you mean by nice format? So since you are applying KVL in mesh 2 I will prefer the coefficient of I2 to be positive. So what if I arrange the terms of this equation I will have minus 4 times I1 plus 8 times I2 you can solve this thing and you can check this thing this is equal to 0. This is my equation number 2. Even one can write plus 4 I1 minus 8 I2 is equal to 0 no problem ok. So these are the two equations I will just write down this in matrix format. So here I will have from equation number 1 12 minus 4 and this will get multiplied with I1 and I2 and the right hand side is 10. So you can see here equation number 1 I have written over here 12 times I1 minus 4 times I2 is equal to 10. If you write down equation number 2 here I will have minus 4 here you will have 8 I2 and this is equal to 0. So this is two equation. There are two equation and there are two unknowns and that is the fair thing in mathematics. You are aware of this thing two equation two unknowns. So you, you can solve this thing in, in calculator. You enter these coefficients and these constants over there. Of course you have to use calculator. Just I am showing a matrix format over here. And I1 turns out to be 1 ampere. You can change this answer. And I2 turns out to be 0.5 ampere. But the problem is not over yet. You have to calculate current through 1 ohm. Okay. The 1 ohm is over here. So current through 1 ohm is equal to. Now if you see here current through 1 ohm it is nothing but I2. Whenever I am writing this thing I2 that means I am moving downward. Because through 1 ohm I2 is moving downward. Okay. So I2 is equal to 0.5 ampere downward. So this is how you can solve this numerical using mesh analysis okay now if you see here this matrix this matrix over here this is in the format r 
that means this is the resistance matrix into current and the right hand side is voltage so basically you are writing ohm's law over here okay from these two equation now one can easily verify whether you are getting this thing or not i am repeating this thing this is just for verification purpose okay now you add all the resistances in mesh one so 5 plus 3 8 plus 4 12 so 12 is over here is there any resistance shared with mesh 2 yes 4 ohm okay current through 4 ohm in terms of i1 and i2 they are opposite i1 is going downward i2 is going up that's why you will have minus 4 over here okay so correct and when you go up in this mesh you will have plus 10 so plus 10 on right hand side okay Similarly, you add all the resistances in mesh 2, so 4 plus 3, 7 plus 1, 8, so 8 will be over here, that will be the coefficient of I2. Is there any resistance shared with mesh 1? Yes, 4 ohm, so here minus 4, because the currents are in opposite direction. And there is no voltage source in mesh 2, so that is equal to 0 over here, okay. So you can solve this thing and you will get this answer, okay. This is just for verification purpose, thanks.